The 1920s were a fascinating decade, a calm before the storm, a small glimmer of joy sandwiched between some of the darkest moments of the 20th century. The Great War was over, influenza had died out, and in Ireland we got this thing called uh, independence, more or less. I'm not. <clears throat> It was a time of economic prosperity, new political movements and cultural shifts, an era of luxury, debauchery, and stupid hats. Things were permanently on the up and up, with no signs of slowing down. Thanks to technological breakthroughs and artistic expressions, the 1920s stand out as a period of comfort and prosperity, a period in time remembered for many reasons and in many ways. So I guess I just gotta ask you. You like jazz? <laughs> so you're in your house and it's the 1920s and you're bored because it's the 1920s and you've already looked at all the Art Deco and you've already read all the Hemingway and you can't play Mario Kart because Italians haven't been invented yet. Suddenly, a paperboy hands you a flyer. He didn't invade, he didn't walk into your home, you're on the street. That's how he got it to you. You got, you, he, you, you went to, Fuck. The caper kid hands you a flyer for your local dance marathon. And now, 1920s person, you have no reason to be bored. It's pretty much next to impossible to know the true origins of dance marathons. People dancing non-stop for a long period of time seems like something that could have existed as long as human culture. We're stupid like that. We enjoy seeing a person do a thing for a long period of time, and then we reward them for doing that with bragging rights. So. Who knows when it really started? I found one mention in my research, in my investigations of a dance marathon in the 1910s, but the generally agreed upon first dance marathon happened in March 1923, when a woman named Alma Cummings, Alma Cummings danced for 27 consecutive hours. She went through six dance partners and was beating a record previously set by someone in Britain. The, here, the source for that, it's in the corner. I'm not lying. In April 1923, a month later, Homer Morehouse died on the dance floor after 87 hours of non-stop dancing. People were immediately taking things too far. Just, I instantaneously. <laughs> this New Yorkan woman, Alma Cummings, she kind of like started a dance trend like like a good 90 years before TikTok was at the, I can't say, I can't say that. I, I'd rather commit a crime against myself. So yeah. Dance marathons or walkathons or bunion derbies or corn and callus carnivals all fun names for these events, were super popular with the youths of the 1920s. But I bet you're wondering what the rules of these events are. Well, it's very simple. Number one, you get yourself and your dance buddy and you head on down to the dance hall and you register to participate in the dance thing. And then you dance. And you just keep dancing. Rule two is if you stop dancing, you're out. Rule three is if the city stops the dancing, uh, everyone's out. Some events had stricter definitions of what constitutes as dancing. For example, they'd play music at different tempos that participants would have to throw and jive to to prove that they were moving to the rhythm of the music. While other places were a bit more chill and were just kind of like, as long as you're doing some form of movement and your knees aren't scraping along the floor, you're, you're still in it with a chance to win it. Like most things, dance marathons started off as a bit of dumb fun and very quickly became vehicles for money. So for a few nickels and dimes, you could head on down to your local dance hall and watch couples humiliate them. They push themselves to the limits physically and emotionally and mentally for honor and glory and money. <laughs> Imagine the Olympics, but more swing jazz. And also, unlike the Olympics, they had karate. That's not true. The, uh, Tokyo Olympics uh, would have had karate if they uh, had gone forward. Um, also, I don't think 1920s people uh, knew what karate was. And if they did, how did I get drama? The thing dance marathons had that the Olympics have never had 
is drama. And North has spiced things up to make things a bit more interesting. They'd have some cunt go about with a microphone saying stuff like, Albert and his sweetheart Gretchen are here, everybody, because they have a newborn baby son and they need that prize money to raise a newborn baby son. Glory and Robert, everybody, they're trying to become movie stars, big movie stars. We'll see them on the silver screen someday. But for tonight, they're here dancing with all of you. Francis and Zelda are here, everybody. They're here to maintain a record of 17,000 consecutive dance hours. Isn't that incredible, ladies and gentlemen? Also, Patty and Saoirse are there in the corner being Catholic. This could be taken a step further by having professional marathoners mixed in with a crowd of amateur dancers. So rather than making shit up on the spot, the lad with the microphone would be working with people in the crowd who would bring all the good things you need for good entertainment. They'd have fucking tension and they'd have sub stories, and they'd limit the chance that the owners of the event would actually have to pay out the prize money. It's these types of shenanigans that would get people invested in the competition. The crowd would go wild, they'd have couples to cheer for and villains to boo. And also, as mentioned in like half the places I did research about this topic in, in a way, you could kind of see it as like, the beginnings of reality TV, which while an interesting observation is fundamentally wrong because they didn't have TVs in the 1920s. I mean, some dude did invent the TV set in 1925, but people were still going to picture palaces to see the news, okay? Which, speaking of cinemas, they were fucking pissed. <laughs> they hated dance marathons because they'd always take a big chunk of the business anytime they'd come into town. Because evidently, if you have the choice between some weird 1920s guy called Al Jolson or some other made up name doing some weird 1920s acting or watching your pal Kenneth fucking exhaust himself for 12 hours on a dance floor, what are you gonna go watch? Quick reminder, there's no alcohol at any of these events. Unless you're a crime committer, there's no alcohol anywhere in the US at, at this point. And like, not to get too distracted, but what was it with 20s America and taking the fun stuff out of drinks? Like, they took the cocaine out of the Coca-Cola, and then we're just like, why don't we take the fun bit out of cocktails too? Like, what? <laughs> Moving on. Uh, besides movie theater owners, there were other people that were opposed to these endurance tests. A few church groups uh, thought the dancing was bad because of the dancing and the hanging off each other and the like being in contact with each other for like long periods of time was kind of a little bit too a little bit too provocative for them, a little bit a little bit too sensual, a little bit uh, horny. Oh, uh, there was also a bunch of women's groups that were against these events because of their unethical practices. You know, charging crowds money to watch couples humiliate themselves who are only there in the hopes to win a, a cash prize. That's a fraction of what the event organizers would get from these events if, if and when the events weren't rigged. But come on, come on, if they're so bad, how come they kept happening? Hmm, explain, riddle me that one. Why would they keep happening? Well, the shady ones would never visit the same place twice. They just kind of go across America looking for places with decent sized populations that hadn't had a dance marathon yet and just set one up. And uh, a few places did ban them. In 1928, the city of Seattle bans dance marathons within the city limits. The city of Oak follow suits in 1930. Bellington and Tacoma put their foot down, refusing to dance to the beat of these walk -a In the year 1932, Washington State prohibited... <coughs> A few other places uh, banned dance marathons across the country, but I don't want to go through them all by name because as fun as that voice is, it uh, hurts my throat. You probably noticed that uh, some of those years weren't, uh, they were no longer the 1920s. They were in fact, the year is 1930. <coughs> I immediately tried to do that voice again. You see folks, these events, while crowd pleasers in the roaring 20s, um, in case you're unaware, the 1920s ended with this thing called uh, the Wall Street Crash and the Great Depression, which kind of put a bummer 
uh, on everything. In the US alone, 2.5 million people were suddenly unemployed, a figure that would eventually rise to 14 million a quarter of the working population of the US. People were desperate for money and food and shelter, which are things these dances provided, not out of the goodness of their hearts, but to attract more participants to these events. They dangle hope over so many people's heads just to rip it away from them, in many cases leaving them exhausted and more distraught than before they went to the dance. And there's also a fair few times where they didn't even put on the dance, they just scammed people out of their money and dipped out of town. So that made quite a few uh, local and state governments mad, so they banned the dancing. Here's the thing, while states prohibiting these dances from happening certainly contributed to the end of these competitions, clever marketing boys would just turn around and say, well, you know, these dances, they're just too cool and edgy and radical for like your state to understand them. But they'd say that in 1930s English. But evidently something did kill off the bop 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 till you drop dance competitions or we'd still be going to them today. And if it wasn't outrage from social groups and it wasn't the law, what what stopped them from happening? Why they suddenly disappear? Um, People just sort of got bored of them. Event organizers could add on as many bells and whistles as they wanted onto the things, but people just moved on. It was a fad, much like planking and belief in the monarchy, so it, ju it just died out on its natural course. People moved on to something different. Not necessarily better, but different. Ron Grossman wrote an article about this um, called When the Dancing Never Stops for Chicago Tribune in 2010. His closing lines read as follow. The issue of marathon dancing was rendered mute on December 7th, 1941. With Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor, the nation's mood turned somber and dance partners were separated. Nothing like a good old war to stop people partaking in near death experiences, huh? Uh, it's an oversimplification, of course it is. It, it makes it seem very easy to understand. But um, it sounds cool. And I remember reading somewhere that ending a video on a quote makes the video seem really cool. 